From the moment I saw her, I knew I was the one for her. I'd never seen her in the village before. I gathered she must be from one town over. I stood at the door at the entrance to my blacksmith shop. My forearm rested on top of the door frame. I took in all her beauty as she slowly walked down the cobbled pathway of Main Street. The sun was shining on her golden locks, each strand seeming to have been curled in position perfectly around her freckled cheeks and down to her shoulders. Her brown dress was wrinkle-free and hugged her rightly so around her tiny waist. She looked youthful as she smiled. Her emerald green eyes sparkled with delight as the young men tipped their hats off and offered to carry her basket. As she grew closer, she spotted me and her eyes locked onto mine. Her eyes opened wide, then narrowed down. Her cheeks grew rosy as she shyly approached the shop. Her delicate voice whispered, Aren't you gonna ask if I need any help, handsome stranger? I responded by saying, A pretty lady, like yourself? I doubt you'll have any trouble finding help out there. I waved my hand pointing it in the direction of the street. Besides, no disrespect ma'am, but I've got way too much work today. I nodded and turned my back to her. She grew silent for a moment, but determined, she asked. I wouldn't suppose that you would know when you aren't busy with too much work, would you? I had to chuckle at her boldness. No woman had ever come up to me, much less request my presence. I was what the women called intimidating. My body had been molded from lifting heavy metals and tree trunks. Chopping wood for stoves and selling it was my hobby. My hands were coarse and had calluses, and my face boasted a dark beard. My hair was jet black, my shoulders standing out and tapering into my back. My skin was medium olive, unless you counted the gray soot from the shop. I turned my back towards her, wiping my hands on my apron. Tell you what, Missy, if you manage to find yourself on this part of town on Friday afternoon, oh, I'd say around 4 o'clock, you might just find that I'm not so busy then. I winked at her chuckling to myself again. She turned to leave, but not before calling back. See you then, Mr. Handsome. My name is Vladimir, I muttered under my breath. A few moons had passed since Elizabeth, Bella for short, and I had gotten acquainted. We discovered we both had an unnatural love for the forest. Its tall dark pines, the smell of moist earth, and the crunch of the leaves. It was all so alluring, so magical. Bella housed with me. Her parents had both died, making her an orphan. The first day she had came from the village was to purchase food for the orphans, as trade was scarce there. I believed bringing her to live with me would ease any trouble she might have had. Little did I know, this village too would come with its own risks. I scowled. My thick brows were bunched down together. I looked down at the carcass. My best friend, Pavel, was hunched down flipping the deer body on its side. Are you suggesting foul play, Vlad? Asked Pavel, while sliding his hat back and scratching his straw-like hair. I looked around. This deer had been torn open. It had wound marks mostly around its neck, and one of its eyes had been clawed and sliced, so it had glazed over to a murky gray color. The other eye was still open, showing a contrast of brown. The deer's horns were missing, either gnawed or sliced off. I sighed. <sighs> Whatever or whoever did this, did this for sport, not for food. Pavel gasped. <gasps> Shush, I would do something like that. Pavel lowered his voice. You don't think? He looked up with questioning eyes. There was a rumor of a lady who wore black, thought to be a witch. She took children into the forest to seduce, then sacrifice to the spirits. Of course, these were just rumors spread around like wildfire to excuse why a few of the townspeople had gone missing or mysteriously passed. I blamed it on the cold weather, but a few people have claimed to have seen her and taken children along the river where the prairie starts and the meadows bloom with flowers. But I had never seen her, although I questioned myself if I had seen her in the shadows by the alley. I saw what I thought was a woman's figure dressed in black from my peripheral vision. Vladimir? I snapped back from my thoughts. I looked up to see my beautiful Bella standing by the forest's edge. Her head was wrapped with a wool scarf, and she wrapped it around herself tighter. Is everything okay? Did you find what you're looking for? She scoped the surroundings and added, It's starting to get foggy. Shouldn't we retire to the village now? She was right, of course. We packed up our stuff after burying the deer and headed back. I let Bella get ahead so I could whisper to Pavel, Keep your head down, but your ears open. Something's afoot. We were at Sir Salvatore's funeral when I saw the witch. Mr. Salvatore was the master blacksmith. 
I learned all my traits from his superior craftsmanship. Sir Salvatore was not very old, at least not old enough to suddenly fall ill and pass. His stories had not yet been told to any grandchildren. His wife was left behind with two ten-year-old boys. Bella comforted them while I read one of Sir Salvatore's personal excerpts. You need only look as far as yourself for hope. As I did so, I looked up and saw her. The black hooded woman. She was standing among those in the back. I forgot for a moment the script. I searched for her, but I blinked and I could not find her. But I knew she was there. I had seen her this time for a moment. A week had passed since Sir Salvatore's death and my thoughts were to keep Bella safe. I always wanted children of my own, and I was starting to consider Bella's advances towards having a child. My concern was the worrisome amount of children that had gone missing or found dead, whether it was no longer a factor in the deaths. Bella always had a positive outlook on life. She always saw the saucer as half full. She loved children, and her beauty was mesmerizing. My mind kept thinking, I have to catch that witch before any harm can befall Bella. Shortly after, I proposed a weekly town meeting. We set up maps to post sightings of the witch. We set traps and live animals that were snatched at night. We started to notice a pattern of when the witch would attack. It was usually around 12 to 3 a.m. when everyone slept. We set up watch guards around the town, but the witch eluded them all. I was on patrol the night a chilling scream pierced the cold air. It was a terrible welling. We reached one of the cottages located near the central of the village. A woman came out holding a baby's blanket and going on about how She took her! She took my baby! She took her and she said she would take Bella also at the first wolf moon tomorrow! She grabbed at me and screamed. You have to save her! My baby is gone! I saw her take her! But you must save Bella from her! I pulled the woman off my shirt. Save Bella from who? I asked, already knowing. The witch! The woman screamed. Save her from the witch before the wolf's moon tomorrow! I said, Bella is safe at home. I started saying, she's perfectly fine. By herself. I muttered, thinking, Bella! I called out. She's at home by herself. I ran with each breath I took, I felt the pain of ice needles from the sharp air. My side had a cramp from being nervous, but I didn't care. I overlooked all that. I had to know Bella was fine. I needed to know that I was overthinking and that she was safe in the confines of our home. Bella, I called out as I threw open the door. Bella! I was looking through each room only hearing the silence as a response. Bella! I called out one more time while lowering my head to the ground, my eyes filled with tears, angry tears, tears of loathe. There was no question in my mind. I had to kill the witch. I was going to capture her and make her suffer forever, thinking she could take my love, Bella. The next morning before sunrise, I headed out towards the meadows. I was armed with my gun. I held it loosely by my hands, but ready to spring into action at any time. I bent down by the stream, and I took a handful of water and gulped. As I observed the location, it seemed pleasant. The trees were less dense. The sun peeked out illuminating the white and pink flowers that seemed to bounce around. A scream? Had I just heard a scream? No, I thought as I tried to hear over my beating heart. There! Again! It wasn't a scream, it was a child's laughter. I gripped my gun and steadily inched forward against the tall grass. I heard shifting. I tried to get closer, but my boot slipped. And I stepped on a twig, making a loud snapping sound. The shifting stopped abruptly. This was my only chance, I thought. I know you're there. Come on out, I called. From the grass arose a woman in all black. Are you the witch? I asked, pointing my gun at her torso. If you say I am. She stated. Her voice was stern. Her hair was as black as mine, but hers was down to her waist. Even at that length, it still flew easily in the wind, cracking back and forth like a whip. She had a straight, sharp nose, and her skin was porcelain. It showed no signs of freckles, like Bella's face. Her eyes were dark brown and almost black up close. I could see the faintest wrinkle around her eyes, 
Either from laughter or from frowns. My guess was the latter. Her plump red lips were pouting, and her hands were held on her hips. She was completely unlike Bella, yet there was beauty in her, as well as those are birthing hips, I thought, as she glared at me. Are you the witch? I repeated myself. Shouldn't you know a witch when you see one? She asked. Otherwise, you'd look really foolish pointing a gun at an unarmed woman. She snapped back. This woman had me in awe. You may be enchanting, I retorted, but you are no witch. I must ask, why do you wear all that black? And what have the children seen here in your presence? She scoffed. Not that it's anyone's business. I know what the townspeople think, and they are mistaken. I wear black because... Mother? A girl's voice called out from the grass. The woman put up her right hand to silence the child. Hush, darling. Mother is talking to the large man with a gun in his hand, dear. She said, then directed her attention back to me. I wear black because I'm mourning my husband's death. It will be a year tomorrow. She lifted her slender pointy finger up and sarcastically waved it, saying, And people see me with children because like most women my age, I'm a mother. The little girl's voice called out again. Mother, are you done talking to the large man with the gun in his hands now? Mother! Yes, it's all right, dear. You can come on out now, said the woman. A miniature replica of the woman emerged from behind her black skirt. My name's Grace, giggled the little girl. I caught myself still pointing the gun in their direction and quickly lowered it. Well, um, <clears throat> yes, well, sorry to perturb you, ma'am. I'll be on my way, I stated. Wait, she called out. Why are you looking for the witch? She asked. She has my Bella, I blurted out. Your what? She looked at me puzzled. My love, her name is Elizabeth. The witch has taken her and we'll get rid of her if we don't rescue her before the next wolf's moon, I yelled. First off, lower your voice. Second, if we don't rescue her, who is we? She inquired. One minute you had a gun pointed to me saying I'm a witch, the next you want me to go on a rescue mission to save the princess of your fairy tale? <sighs> Some chump. She tissed. She was starting to annoy me. Okay, I meant if I don't rescue her. She's the only thing I have and means the world to me, I stated. Matter of fact, the woman tilted her head and gave me a side glare this time. She means the world to you? Well, that's not surprising. When you're in love, they usually do. My husband. She trolled off. He meant the same to me. He built the cottage where we live. He made it a home for us and Papa, his father. We had a few years of bliss before the witch killed him too. So if this Bella means the world to you, then I'll help you or die trying. She looked up, staring right at me, almost through me. I could tell she was serious. I gulped. Thank you. That's all I could muster. She turned back and spoke to her daughter. Grace, run back home. Don't look back and lock yourself in the cottage with Papa and your brother. Mama has some work to do. She kissed Grace on the forehead before turning back to me. So, do we have a heading? I felt dumb. No, I said. We were headed back, arguing which way to go. I wanted to go back to the house and search for clues, and she wanted to search the forest. Listen, what's your name? She asked. Vladimir? I responded. Listen, Vlad. My husband was taken into the woods by the witch last year. I remember it so well because I was trying to rescue him, you see. Well, it didn't happen, but all witchy stuff happens in the woods. All right, enough, I blurted out. We will go to the forest, but you better be right about this. We only have one chance to get the witch to save Bella from the witch. I am not going to let the same thing happen to her that happened to your dead husband. She gave out a gasp, then shut down. She looked away, tears wallowing in the corners of her eyes. I I'm sorry, I stated, but she cut me off. No, you're right. He is dead. I couldn't save him. Let's just keep moving. She nudged past me and headed towards the woods. I couldn't make sense of this woman. She was attractive. Her tongue was sharp, but she obviously had a soft spot. Not just for her husband, but the way she kissed her daughter on the forehead. Look! She said, pushing herself off of me as I accidentally ran into her. 
What? I looked around. The smoke, don't you see it? It's burning blue. We have to get there before nightfall. What? I asked her once I saw her glaring at me. I wasn't going to say anything, but since you asked, I was right, you know, about the woods. She said with a smirk. I grinned. Yes, but we have yet to save Bella, I added. We walked through the forest for a while on no particular path. It would get dense, then spread out. Finally, we reached the edge of a clearing. You could hear the crackling of the fire and a woman's voice that seemed to be chanting. Then abruptly, the chanting stopped. I know you're there. It spoke. The voice was spine tingling. I know you've come to save her, but you can't save her. It's you I'm after, you see. I want it. I turned to speak to the woman in black, but she was gone. That bitch! Was she the witch? I questioned myself. I had no choice but to face the witch myself. I hurled around the tree and pointed my gun. Eat lead, you mother! I stopped. Huh? I thought. Where was the witch? I looked around. All was quiet except the fire. And next to the fire tied up was... Bella! Bella! I called out to her. Bella, are you okay? I ran and untied her. Handsome? She called out. How did you know where to find me? It wasn't me, it was... Never mind. Where's the witch? I asked. Oh, handsome. I thought you might not come for me. They never do cry in my arms. Even while crying, she was beautiful. Of course I would, I reassured her. But I need to find the witch. She still might be around, I said. The witch? Oh, yes. The witch, she's here. Look! I turned and immediately felt a searing pain in my chest. I looked down and saw a dagger. Bella? I called out as I fell to my knees. Bella, Bella, Bella. Is that all you can say? Bella snarled. I looked up at her. Why? I asked. Why? She mimicked me. Why? Didn't you hear me? It's youth I'm after. I want to live and stay young. Forever. She screamed and danced around me. Babies and children usually work best as a sacrifice. If not a few strong men, but not in the wolf's moon, only a sacrifice of a witch's child or an alpha male will do. As she spoke, I managed to take out the knife and started crawling away, but she quickly realized that. Where do you think you're going? She screamed as she pulled me back by my feet. You just need one more slit to your throat, and I'll have all the beauty I need for a year. She stood above me, her locks in disarray, her face contorting. She raised the dagger up above her head. I put my forearm up to block her, then suddenly a voice rang out. Hey! I looked up in time to see a tree branch mush Bella, the witch, right in the face. She dropped to the floor like a sack of potatoes. I've been waiting a year to do that, said the woman in black. You came back. <gasps> I gasped. Who, me? She questioned. I didn't leave. I went around back in case you needed backup. But from the looks of it, it seems I would have been more useful at the forefront. She smirked. It's just a flesh wound. Walk it off, sir. She said as she pointed to my bleeding chest. I was about to tell her that she needed to back off on the sarcasm when I spotted Bella directly behind the woman in black. Watch out! I hollered. You idiot! Screeched Bella. No mere branch is going to defeat me! She lunged at the woman in black. The woman kept her ground and responded. Oh, well I guess you're right, but what about fires? She questioned as she used Bella's own force against her to shove her into the flames. Bella the witch stood for a moment in confusion, but quickly switched to howls of agony. She withered in pain as the blue flames consumed her. I must say, it took a while for her to burn completely. It was an instant like one might think. If I had to guess, it was about 15 minutes before she finally bowed her head down and grew silent. Her charred body and crisp locks gave off a very unpleasant smell that made my nostril water. Well, guess that's why they call it the wolf's moon, huh? The woman in black cheekly asked. We both just stood there overlooking the last of the branches glow red, but then returned to black. Um, 
I, uh, wanted to thank you for saving my life. I said, so thank you, miss. I felt foolish. I had spent the whole day with this maiden, and I hadn't bothered to ask her name. Oh, remembered I have a name, have you? She questioned with an eyebrow raised. I blushed. Yes, sorry. It's Victoria. She cut me off before I could finish my apology. Yes, that name seems fitting. Thank you, Victoria. And by the way, my full name is Vladimir. I told her. She frowned. What is it? I asked. Aw, and here I like the name Handsome better. <laughs> she winked and threw her head back laughing. I stared at her. It was the first I had seen her laugh. The change was impressive. Her eyes illuminated, and the twinkle in her eyes danced with every heave of her chest. I was mistaken. I thought the wrinkles around her eyes weren't from scowls. They were from all those happy years she described earlier. My chest began to flutter. I wasn't sure if it was a new feeling Victoria was giving me, or if it was a loss of blood. Come on, you big baby. I'll pat you up at the cottage. Papa makes some pretty good stew. If you'd like to stay for dinner. She said, I would like that, I said with a grin. It's been a year since the forest encounter. Victoria and I are hitched, with a little rascal on the way. She still drives me crazy with her shenanigans, of course. But when all is said and done, with her as my partner and our family together, I know she is the one for me. Alexa, show me my baby. Okay. Hmm. There she is. From the moment I saw her, I knew I was the one for her. From the moment I saw her, I knew I was the one for her. No. From the moment I saw her. Like, smolder. From the moment no. I saw her, <laughs> I knew I was poor. I, I, I said smolder. <laughs> From the moment I saw her, I knew I was the one for her. No, and it's not for her. It's for her. From the moment I saw her, I knew I was the one for her immediately. Let me know at the bottom. Like, <laughs> sub subscribe, and comment. <clears throat> From the moment I saw her, I knew I was the one for her. Well, stop doing that. From the moment I saw her, I knew I was... Yes. Well, don't do that. From the moment I saw her. <laughs> it's not from. It's just from the moment I saw her, I knew I was the one for her. From the moment I saw her, I knew I was the one for her. I had never seen her in the village before. I gathered she must be from one town over. Why do you do that? Stop.